Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to yet another Mortal Kombat video. Now, coming off the hype of yesterday's trailer, today I wanted to break down and analyse the contents of the trailer frame by frame in order to make sure you know everything you're getting yourself into once this hits cinemas as well as HBO Max. Stay safe and take care out there guys. I will be analysing the Red Band trailer and it is absolutely worth mentioning here, this video is going to be very very spoiler heavy. Like, g go away now. For reals, I'm going to be revealing a lot because there's a lot that they do reveal within the contents of this trailer. Now, without any further ado, let's get on with the trailer breakdown and analysis. Now, the opening sequence of this trailer is the real tone setter. Taking place seven years before the events of this film, we learn that the special forces have tracked down Sub-Zero to Brazil. And apparently, this is the very first time the special forces have interacted with someone outside their realm. Because of Bihan's dangerous nature, he's branded as a fugitive and is hunted by an underarmed Jax, as well as a group of special forces operatives. But this plan quickly goes sideways, as Sub-Zero freezes the complex, presumably killing everyone on the team, minus Jax. But he suffers an even worse fate. Here the Cryomancer freezes and shatters his arms before him, a fate that Jax just cannot escape. Now, I know that some aren't entirely too happy with the decision here, but please do hear me out. This entire trailer paints Sub-Zero as this villainous monster who's downright heartless to his core. I mean, even when he's shattering Jax's arms, the dude is full on maintaining deep eye contact with him, clearly getting a kick out of watching him suffer. In fact, let's actually talk a little bit about Bihan here. His cold hearted nature has really echoed throughout his entire design, from his cold dark blues that are nearly black, possibly a homage to Noob Saibot, to his somewhat alien HR Geiger like mask. Even his protruding warrior battle armor seems alien in design. This opening sequence is a really great introduction to the character and makes him seem like a force to be reckoned with. I mean, even when he immobilizes the shotgun in Jax's hands, he twists his head sideways as if it's alien to him, like it's something he's never seen before. Big shout out to Joe Taslim as well for doing this. It adds a sinister nature to the character. Now, our next shots here are of Sonya Blade and the film's original character, Cole Young. Now, Cole serves as the audience character and is the somewhat fish out of water character, bounded by fate to the tournament, something that's explained to him by Jax and Sonya. From here we get a very brief montage of Cole's character and his capabilities. Whilst he may not be as experienced as some of these other fighters, he is capable of handling himself, being an experienced fighter with an MMA background. It's also here where we finally see the Dragon Brand, a birthright and mark which bonds a fighter to the tournament, something pointed out by Matilda Kim who, for those of you who don't know, has been cast as Cole's daughter. She's only seen here in this very brief section of the trailer, so I wouldn't expect to see her too too much from the film. But there is a reason I am mentioning her here. In the following scene, we do see Jax talking to Cole in a car, possibly talking about his duty and destiny to the realm. But in the shot, it is worth mentioning here that when Jax is driving, you can clearly see he has human hands. So the special forces must have gotten contact with Cole quite some time ago, so this is before the seven year gap where Jax had his arms crushed. So the question here is, why didn't he join them and what brings Cole back? Well, Cole has always been described as an individual that prioritizes his daughter's care, even over his own. So when he's got an invitation from these military individuals that say he's got to enter a tournament where he could possibly maybe will die, it's understandable that he would decline because who would be there for his daughter if he were to die? So. Why is he back? Well, touching back on the synopsis, it is mentioned here that Shang Tsung had sent off Sub-Zero in order to track him down and kill him. So it does help connect the pieces as to why Cole would come back. Understandably, not out of fear for just his own life, but for his daughter. Now, for those of you who haven't quite picked up on it yet, Cole is in fact going through the steps of what is known as the hero's journey. And I will be referring to it every time we see Cole, as it does give us a rough idea of 
how far we are into the movie. Plus, it does seem like Cole is the main character here, so the events of the movie will definitely be coming from his perspective. Now, our next shot after this point is a backwards and wide shot of Melina. With the wide shot, we actually get to see where they filmed in Australia. And the setting we do see here is what I believe is acting as Shang Tsung's island. Now, a really, really nice touch here is what they've done with this glass tablet. I'm, I'm sure this thing actually has a real name. Someone in the comments section make me look stupid and put out the actual term of it. But there's this painted glass tablet of the great Kung Lao defeating Shang Tsung. So this iteration of the series definitely paying homage to its origin. Now this tablet does in turn lightly foreshadow Goro who we will be talking about in a bit as he does make a surprise appearance here. As Sonya continues to explain to call the Mortal Kombat tournament we get our next shot here of two shadowed figures in a frozen building. If you can't quite tell the left is Shang Tsung and the right is Raiden and I actually believe that this confrontation takes place during the opening sequence of the trailer in the very same building where Jax has his arm shattered. So I believe what happens here is that Raiden is warning them to return back to their realm as they are crossing into his domain. Of course that is me being under the assumption that the movie is abiding by the same rules as the game but I believe this would explain why this confrontation would take place place at all. Moving on we do have a shot of Cole where he's clearly tired and distressed but as he stares into the mirror we get a bit of a jump scare here with Hanzo Hasashi appearing in a reflection. Now this could mean a number of different things. On the surface it could be that he is having nightmares of the Hell Spectre from either his dreams or own interaction with him or this could possibly be something much more and this is definitely me theorizing and that is that Cole may in some way shape and form may have some relation to Hanzo Hasashi as the whole mystery revolving around Cole right now is why was he chosen? Why is he here? In theory Cole could be a direct descendant of the Shira Ryu clan with his ancestors having survived the onslaught. So he doesn't need to be a blood relative of Scorpion, maybe it is something as simple as Fate of Origin. There are a number of different theories to this honestly and speaking of Hanzo, our next Next sequence here in the trailer is a flashback of the fall of the Shira Ryu. During this really dramatic sequence, we see a clearly angered Hanzo Hisashi preparing himself for battle as he breaks down in front of his dead wife and son, who have been frozen. From here, we get a really nice action set piece of Hanzo Hisashi just wasting Lin Kuei goons around him. There's also a very brief confrontation here with Bi Han, a fight that we all do know he loses uses as one we see it in a promotional material and two it sets him up as scorpion. After this point we get our introduction to the main cast of heroes outside of Cole starting first with Sonya Blade and then surprisingly Kano who does seem to be acting as the mild comic relief here but since we are all familiar here with the Merc we all know that betrayal isn't too far away so please do be wary of the decision for him to be a hero as we all do know the nature of this character. Our next hero here is Liu Kang, who is in fact sporting two different attires for this film. The first is a black garb, which I'm presuming he uses for training, as we do see a bit of it in the promotional material and what I believe are the early sequences of the film. But during the tournament section, he's now sporting a white top, something that we will see again in a fair bit during his official tournament match. From here, we move on to Jax, who is now fully decked out in his metal arms and is taking taking on another fighter who I actually believe is Reiko. I'm not entirely too sure here as the shots that we do have in the trailer haven't 100% been clear but with the costume design and the hair I do think it is the Outworld General. I could be very very wrong about this but it's very very clear from this sequence here that the General is outmatched and defeated by the soldier. I also think he's getting fatality. Our next character here is none other than Kung Lao 
Zhao, who surprisingly deflects a red beam of energy fired at him. So this possibly goes back to what I had mentioned just a second ago of Kano betraying his team. But that may be one layer too deep, and this could simply be some infighting amongst the heroes. Because I could definitely see why a member of the Shaolin would look down on such a scumbag like Kano. Now our next and final main character reveal here is the Thunder God, Raiden, who now is no longer obscured in the shadows. But sadly, there's not too much to say about him, as it seems like he's playing the silent but strong type. Now I am going to point out that this sequence is actually rather interesting. So I presume that this scene here takes place at the very end of their training, as it does seem like Raiden teleports them to Shang Tsung's island. But if we freeze the shot just before he teleports, we can actually see Katana's fan on the left side of the frame. So what could this mean? Well, considering that she isn't properly present in this film, and Melina is, maybe there was some kind of discourse between the Edenian princess and Shao. Maybe she's already broken away from his side, and is possibly hiding in Earthrealm in disguise, passing her fans over to Raiden as a somewhat blessing for them to go on and defeat Shao. Or maybe I'm thinking one layer again too deep, and this is simply a trophy or easter egg. I just don't know right now, but I think it's a very interesting inclusion here, seeing as we have Melina but not Katana here. Our next shot here is of Scorpion and Cole in a frozen warehouse. Now. Spoilers if you can't quite tell, but this is clearly the end sequence of the Scorpion vs Sub-Zero fight. A fight sequence that Cole is in fact actually a part of. You see, there is a line during the trailer where Sub-Zero actually introduces himself, which makes sense if he's confronting Cole for the very first time formally. I think as this fight gets underway, Scorpion interferes, which leads to the magnificent fight sequence we do see in the trailer here. We can actually see some battle armor and Cole. I'm gonna point this out once again a little bit later on, but again, hero's journey, and I suspect this fight sequence goes on when we're probably at the start of the third act. But yes, from what you can tell from this shot here, it's one of Scorpion disappearing and clearly teleporting out of a hard-fought battle. The next few shots here are of Liu Kang walking as the sun sets on what I presume is Shang Tsung's island, a close-up of Hanzo and what I can only presume is hell, at least from the red light glowing off his face, and then Kung Lao fighting Cole. Now by judging the architecture of the arena, it's safe to say that this is all before the tournament, where everyone is still training and getting an idea of what the competition and level will be like. This is then quickly followed by a close-up shot of Melina licking her side clean of some blood, meaning that she has claimed a victim amongst the cast. Whilst I can't say who it definitely is, as we only see the side and not who the blood belongs to. I actually believe it's Kung Lao, as we don't see much of him after he is teleported to Shang Tsung's island. Following this, we get a close-up shot of Shao Kahn, but by judging the terrain surrounding this statue, I believe that this is a brief glimpse of what Outworld looks like. Again, it's a bit of a theory, but it doesn't quite resemble the landscape we've seen in previous shots. After this, we see a figure uncloak himself, and if you can't quite tell by the end of the trailer, this actually confirms Reptile. From here we get a fair few action shots before we do close out the trailer, with one of them being Shang Tsung ordering his outworld fighters to kill the opposing side. We see Sub-Zero teleporting in for combat, and then an official tournament match, where Liu Kang summons his infamous Fire Dragon. But who is he fighting? Well if we look quite close, then you can see it's none other than the speed demon Cabal, who is sporting his iconic hook blades. We do see them a little later on in the trailer too. Now, from how this is framed, this of course does look like the end of the battle. So a fatality is going to be performed, and for whatever reason, Cabal thinks that he can block a fire dragon. What a genius. Continuing our sequence of action shots, we get our first official look at Goro and God damn, my dude has been eating his green beans. Now, real talk, Goro actually looks 
pretty good. And he does actually resemble his MK9 counterpart in terms of both costume and facial features. It looks like Goro will be fighting Cole, but with someone as experienced as Lou on the team, is this a fight that Cole loses and Lou possibly picks up? I mean, in the original MK movie, it was Johnny Cage that did beat Goro. So I don't know, but of this movie being seen through the eyes of Cole, it's hard not to overlook this possibility. Also, before I forget, remember the body armor that I had mentioned? Well, Cole is sporting it here. So obviously, Cole has learned of his origin and is now physically embodying it. But what exactly is the upper torso armor he's wearing? Again, I don't know right now, as sadly the details haven't been dropped. Here we get another shot of Sub-Zero in the streets, presumably from the opening Brazil segment, some more shots of Liu Kang fighting Cabal, and of course the finale of Scorpion vs Sub-Zero, which is just beautifully framed and choreographed. It's also here where we get to see Bihan's armor properly and Scorpion's armor in frame. And it's a very interesting interpretation of Scorpion's gear, feeling very samurai-esque whilst using his spear and sword. And we do see him use the spear twice here. Now after the end card, it's followed by a very, very spoiler heavy sequence. So again, be prepared because they reveal a lot here. So during this quick cut, after Shang Tsung shouts finish him, we see Jax clobbering Reiko across the face, Melina's guts being blasted across the arena by Sonya Blade, Hanzo killing off more jobbers from the Lin Kuei in his flashback, a brief glimpse of a fight between Sonya and Melina, and a full shot of Reptile getting absolutely wasted in every sense of the word. So, although the Saurian is definitely going to be in this film, it looks like it's going to be very bittersweet. I know he looks red in this frame here, but that's probably from the lighting of the fire going on around him. So, what do I think? Well, honestly, I think this trailer is awesome and a really good tone setter. There's a lot to like and a lot to enjoy in terms of costume design, action set pieces, story and the cast. I really do like what this film has to offer and I am looking forward to seeing what the finished product is like. However, that's not to say all of it is perfect. The CGI at certain points can look a little bit iffy, but it's not diabolical. It's just in certain still frames, it definitely can look a little bit janky. Plus, I will say some of the CG blood does look like jelly, but I can definitely overlook it if it's not too obnoxious and in my face. It's just something that helps add to violence of the scene instead of it being excessive. So with that being said, that has been it for this breakdown. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to break this down frame by frame. I really enjoyed this trailer a lot, and I am super excited for the film, but the only downside here is that this trailer showed off a lot, like a lot, a lot, too much honestly. But I think this has actually been purposely done, so the fans know what to expect going in. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because at least it's not lying about what it is. Now that's it for me. But before this video wraps up, since you've heard my opinion, what are yours on this trailer? Who are you most excited to see amongst the cast here? And of course, what was your favourite scene from this trailer? Mine's definitely the Sub-Zero Jack sequence. It's, it's just so fucking brutal. But anyway guys, that's it for me. But before this video wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. And if possible, please do not forget to tick that bell as it will keep you up to date with all of the Mortal Kombat content I do have on the horizon including more movie stuff as we itch closer to that release date but until then as always please comment like subscribe and share this video with everyone you know please take care and I'll see you all next time